Now, for the first 90 seconds of this video, you probably thought, what the hell is he doing? Recording things around his own house. Mm. Now, I want to make a drum kit, and I'm fairly sure I can probably get something out of the sounds I've got. Indeed, I don't know yet. That's the fun bit. You record things thinking, oh, maybe that will make a good thing, that is, and it might be the least expected sound that will work. So I've got all my tracks you can see on the iPad screen. I've named my tracks Light Switch, Black Radiator Hit, Cupboard Door, etc. I'm going to use the Cupboard Door as my bass drum. Now, it's not such a silly idea. You've got something, a door closing against a big box. It's like a beater hitting a drum. Let's see if it works. Now, I'm just going to solo it out here and just play that first hit there. That's not bad. That's quite a good start. Now, I need to edit this. Now, you can do you can do all of this in the sampler as well with GarageBand, but actually I've done it here because I want a little bit more control before I store those samples. So I'm going to just open up the page here, as you can see, until you see snap to grid off, a little message that appears under the play button. This means that I can very finely control the beginning of this sound. And then I'm going to click split and the scissors across. Notice I haven't cut right on the cusp of that drum because actually I want a tiny bit of air beforehand. We can edit that later. So if I get rid of this now, uh, delete. I'm going to bring all of this, I'm going to bring this back to the, all the way to the beginning of my song. So when I go back to bar one, there's my bass drum. Now I want to have the sample at a certain length. So maybe what I'm going to do then is to just have a listen to that and roughly a beat or so later, I want the thing to finish. So I'm going to split it again. I'm going to delete what remains. At this point, save this as something else. So I'm going to go to my songs. I'm going to save this as kick drum edit. You don't want to do too much editing because otherwise you're going to end up with a right old pickle when you're trying to find your snare and your hi-hats. Kick drum edit. There we go. Done. So go back into kick drum edit. I can do anything I like to this and it won't make, uh, it won't matter. Um, I can just keep editing away and it won't affect any of my other files. So there we go. Now I want to do some processing to this. At the moment it's not very bassy. So I'm going to go into my effects pane. I'm going to increase the bass and take the treble down. That's a bit better but I'd like to actually pitch shift this a little. So if I go to edit or settings rather on the right hand side, follow tempo and pitch, I can actually tweak this. I'm going to go down, let's say seven semitones. Just see what happens. That's a bit better, but it has removed some of the top end. I'd like to hear a bit, a bit more of the beta. So perhaps I could just notch the treble back up. Split the difference a little bit less. Quite happy with that. However, the ambience cuts off suddenly. As you can see at the end of the blue, there's no sound there at all. So if I just close that window down and then open automation. This allows me, I think I've done this once before actually. This allows me to set any number of points and I can fade this sound completely out. So if we hear this now, the ambience actually fades out. It's perhaps a little bit early. That's better. So I've got some of the reverb and the tone of the cupboard. Yeah, great tone. Sounds like a Pearl Export drum kit. No, it doesn't sound like a Pearl Export drum kit. That's not very nice to Pearl. But we've got something. This is a cupboard a door slamming into a cupboard. Now, I want to be able to import this into a sampler elsewhere. So actually what I'm gonna do is I'm going to save this song. I'm gonna come out of this, my songs, and I'm going to save it. I'm going to rather share it as a song, keep it uncompressed. 
Now, you might think, well, what's what's all this about? Why don't you just operate within GarageBand? Why don't you merge tracks and do it that way? Well, actually, I'd like to keep all of these files in a separate place where I can always access them wherever I am. Save to files. It also means you can do things like backing up to a computer, or you can back up to the cloud or do anything you like, and you can know that you've got your sounds there. So it's exporting the song. You think, well, why does it take so long exporting one bass drum? Well, it's got other things to do. So when this is finished, and it usually just goes to a third across, and then it'll suddenly go to the end, and before you know it, there is your song. Kick drum edit. I'm going to add that to my GarageBand file transfer. Then I'm going to create a document, and I'm going to call it Drum Kit, for example. But I'm going to go into the sampler now. Now, you can go to Import Sample, and then you find Kick Drum Edit. And there it is. I'm just playing it with the C on the sampler. And I can also play it at different loudnesses. Now, really, in the real world, we'd like samples of a quiet bass drum and a loud bass drum, but this is just an experiment. And actually, it's going to work. Now, at the moment, as you can see, if I press, press the C and then immediately let go, it only plays some of that sample. If I go to Shape, which is the one of these three yellow buttons here, I can then drag the bottom, the, the end bit, to its maximum extent, which means a maximum release time. And there you go. That means that you can have the notes on your drum roll as short as you like, and it will play the entire bass drum sound. OK, so... At the moment, this song isn't safe because I haven't recorded, so I'm just going to record. There we go, there's a bass drum rhythm of sorts. And I'll come back to the beginning and press play. There's some dynamic range there, even though it's the same sample, it's just being played a little bit quieter. So. There's my kick drum. Now I need to do the same with the snare drum. I need to find a good snare sound and do some editing on that. That's my next job. So now I need to do the same sort of thing with my snare drum. I need to find a sound and try and edit it to make it sound a bit snare-like. But does it need to sound like a Ludwig Black Beauty? Well, of course it's not going to because it's a light switch or a radiator or something else. So don't worry about what it sounds like as long as it sounds nice to you and you can sort of have the vision of where you can use it. Now, I've got the light switch, which is the first sample I took. I quite like that as a snare drum. Now, let's have a little look through this. If I just solo out the light switch recording... I like the second one because actually it's quite full. There's that little sort of slight There's a little sort of hit afterwards. I'm not sure about it at the moment, but let's have a look. I'm just going to go to first of all actually, I'm going to save this song as snare drum edit. Um rename. I could have also duplicated it just to save all of my time but you end up with files 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 upon files upon files just for the purposes of this demonstration i'm not going to bother with that so snare drum edit let's try uh splitting that track there getting rid of everything that came before so delete yeah so i'm just going to Make the now there's a bit of reverb on there, natural room sound. So I'm going to maybe split it again there. Delete what came after. I'm going to move this all the way back to bar one. Like so. There we go. Now, with the bass drum, I didn't cut 
the end. So the sample ended up being quite long. It was the length of the entire sample. So I forgot to do that. I need to make this. Now this is where it's important to save your work because if you make this one bar long now, it'll take out everything else that you've recorded. And if you've got, if you've run out of undo steps, you can find yourself chopping all of your samples off. Not good. So that means I am going to save this as, as something else. So uh, rename snare drum edit. What I should have done was save it before I'd made it a bar long, but you get the picture. Now let's go back into snare drum edit. Now that ambience is quite noisy. That's not brilliant, but there's something we can do about that. We can take the treble content away a little because that's, and then we can actually restore some treble by putting it through a distortion unit, which makes it sound a bit more snare-like perhaps. Now I need to automate this, automation. Let's get that, um, get a, a, a volume control there so that we can have a gradual fade. That's not bad. That's all right. What I could do is I could experiment with a, a gradual cutoff. Quite like that. Now there is that second, there's that second hit there. Not sure how that's going to work. But what I could do is I could put an extra point in that allows the most of the snare drum through to start with, and then a more of a sharp cutoff. Now. Nah. No, that's not going to work. So maybe I could just do something like this. That's all right. That's better. It's worth, it's worth, really is worth getting this to work. Now I've got that now. So I'm going to uh, click done. I'm going to go to my songs. I'm going to share this. There's another song, and this one is going to be called Snare Drum Edit. So I'm going to save it to files again, so it's in the same place as where my bass drum was. And then I'm going to go back into the other uh, panel where you saw the sampler, put it with the bass drum, and just see what it sounds like. Now, we can also... Now, notice I didn't put the distortion on with this because we can do it afterwards. We can do it actually in situ. Uh, there are obviously advantages to committing some things to your recording like the volumes but perhaps not the distortion perhaps we want to play with it further so I'm going to add that I'm going to go into my song five catchy title there's my snare drum I'm going to duplicate this track and I'm going to go into the sampler I'm going to click edit on there import snare drum edit there we go and import that little import symbol on there with the reverb on it's created quite a nice little slap there so if i just go back to here you've got your bass drum so okay not too bad. Let's see what happens now if I try applying a bit of overdrive to this snare drum. So if I go into plugins and EQ and let's try distortion, drive. Whoa, that's wrong. Now that's perhaps a little bit over the top, but you can hear how this can work. Now the distortion, there's actually quite a lot of bass there. So maybe I'd want to actually take the bass end off the snare a little bit. And then perhaps if I go into visual EQ, although I've cut my bass, I'd want a little bit of body. Now, of course, when you put something through a distortion pedal, a distortion unit afterwards, any quiet sounds that you have will be compressed in a way. So perhaps you could think about putting the distortion on first. 
Now I'm going to make sure that all of this is quantized as well. Quantization straight sixteenth. Make sure that is straight sixteenth as well, so it nicely tightens up. Now let's see what happens if I were to add the drummer hi-hats only along with this. So I've got my own kick and snare, but I take away them from the drummer, leaving just the hi-hats. So there we have it. We've got our kick and snare quite nicely there. Now, other sounds that I recorded that I went around the house with, there may be a hi-hat there somewhere, perhaps one of those key samples. Let's see what happens with that. So that was the snare drum and the bass drum. Now for the hi-hats. So I've got to find a sound that's quite short. It doesn't necessarily need to have the fizz of a zildjian K. We're not trying to get that. We're trying to get something that will go with that cupboard door and the light switch. Yeah, so I had a tea caddy which I'd recorded. Now, I think that last sample, let's just have a listen to the one before it. No, the last sample. Oh, what's that one at the end? No, that's the camera switching off. So let's have a look at this one. Now I'm going to open up the uh, recording there so that I can see exactly where that hi-hat begins. I'm going to split that, get rid of that, go slightly after it, just so that there's enough ambience, and then I'm going to split that, and then delete that, and that leaves my sample. Now, before I continue, I'm going to save this as, or rather I'm going to duplicate it, and then save it as rename Drums Organic Hi-Hats. That's what I should have done before. Now I can go back into it and move this, move the hi-hats. This can be a bit problematic if you're on an iPad and it's sort of, you know, sometimes you have to sort of click off in order that it goes back to the beginning. And there's my sound. Now, I'm gonna make this one bar long again so that it doesn't include all my other samples, including that long one, which was the kettle boiling. Okay, so I've got to make this perhaps a little bit higher pitched and really strip all the bass completely off it. Let's see what happens if I do that. Yeah, that's all right. Now, let's see what happens if I go to settings and I this time pitch it up a bit. There's that little fizz afterwards, so I'm going to go to automation, because I don't mind that as a sound, actually. I'm going to go to automation and then pretty much fade it out as soon as it starts. Hmm, perhaps not so good. It's that second sample, so I could add another point in, perhaps, and make the ambience a little bit... Just a little bit there instead of all there. Okay. Let's see what happens. So if I go to my songs now, I'm going to share it as a song, uncompressed, save to files, and let's see how this works in our main drum space. Now, we can do extra editing when we get there with the sampler, or we can put it through various effects, just to try and we could even put it through an echo so that the hi-hats sort of generate their own rhythm, but by virtue of an echo rather than just repeating notes. Um, let's see what happens. Exporting song is a third of the way through. There we go, done. Add, okay. So let's go back into drum kit organic now. No, it was the other one. Again, if you get stuck with this, if you're searching for stuff, um, it, then my song five, there we go. So, uh, oh, got all, all fingers and thumbs, or more thumbs rather. So there is my uh, drum kit, but this time it's got the organic, or the pie hats that are on drummer. So, Let's just mute the hi-hats of the drummer first. We may be able to use them as well as my own hi-hat sample. So I'm going to 
duplicate this and then I'm going to go into the sampler and I'm going to go new sample import and hi-hats. Now I can trim this in the sampler. Oh, I've managed to get rid of that second edit, but because of the reverb on the drum, it's actually made it quite nice. So let's see what happens if I try taking the decay down slightly. That's not so bad. Now, of course, the sound takes a short time to come in. So if I go to trim now, and then the left hand side here, I'll just bring in ever so slightly. The sound has more of an attack on it. Now it's not going to sound hugely um, if I just open up the velocity all the way. There's not a huge amount of variation there between loud and soft. But if I go there and try and play a beat, okay. Now, if I just go in and quantize this track settings, quantization, straight eighth notes, because that's what I had, I didn't have sixteenths, only quantize to the level you need to, not sixteenth uh, necessarily, it may be eighths. Now, if I go into edit here, if I edit this now, we've got a high velocity. And then I can go in and actually change the velocity of all of my notes. Now it's like sounding, sounding like something. So I can get rid of all those, delete, and I can copy, and that one, I can copy these. and then paste them at bar two, uh, or rather halfway through bar one, paste again, and paste again. Now, this might not sound like much to some people, but it's, it's just different. Now, all of those sounds are completely mine. They're nobody else's, you can't, you know, the, the, when you're trying to get copyrighted sounds off the internet, <laughs> why bother? Why don't you try and make your own? Because you never know what's gonna happen. And I haven't even searched through the kettle or the radiator. I just took lots and lots of samples thinking, I wonder what's gonna happen. That's the beauty of it.